Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video on vertically mounting your GPU in the Corsair Airflow 4000D. This is generally about how to vertically mount your GPU, but also specifically about this case to show you some detail about it. For reference, I'm using MSI's 2070 Super Twin Forza GPU, which is a very nice card with some really nice touches on it, and I'm going to be doing a separate video on this card and talking about the highlights of it and discussing the features. One of which is that on the cooling side, it actually has a mode where it doesn't spin the fans if the temperature is right, so it basically keeps it quiet and therefore fuss free, and that's an, an advantage. But as you can see, it's a fairly chunky 2070, probably not the fattest card out there, but perfect for testing. Now, initially, when I set up the 4000D, I installed the GPU in the standard way, but I knew that Corsair was sending me a vertical mount, so I'd then be able to check out the vertical mounting options in here and then be able to test it. And I'll benchmark before and afterwards, and I'm going to show you those a bit later on. When we talk about what the difference is between them, and it's quite interesting actually. You think that the case, because it's vertically mounted, as you can see here, there are brackets for vertically mounting your GPU at the rear and that it would be easy to do and it wouldn't be a problem. And the setup of it is actually easy and that is a joyful bit and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So basically I'm going to take the card out and talk you through the process of vertically mounting it and show you what that's like. Most modern cases that I've come across recently have a vertical mounting option where they have the slots on the side. I've done vertical mounting previously on the Corsair 680X Crystal and also on NZXT's H510i and I had questions from viewers about whether it was causing problems because you're basically suffocating the GPU by having it close to the glass and I initially didn't think there were an issue there were certainly no issues in terms of performance and FPS but however I'm going to show you some potential problems with this setup you know, previously I was using Founders Edition card which is a bit thinner and although they're known for running quite hot it still worked pretty well now with the 4000D you'll see the standard brackets at the back but you can also remove these vertical ones. They're held in place with thumb screws in the same way. It's basically exactly the same setup, but you have two brackets that can be removed and taken out. This process is fairly similar to what it was on the 680X crystal, and you probably find the same on most modern mid-tower and larger cases where you have enough space to be able to vertically mount. And the reasons for vertical mounting are obviously aesthetic reasons. You get to see the front of the card and that is, as you saw at the video, much nicer looking on the MSI one, for example, where it has not only the fans on display, but also the RGB lighting and things. The other thing you need is an extension lead. So you have a PCIe vertical mounting extension lead here from Corsair that's reasonably affordable, doesn't cost the earth. And it's basically a cable that allows you to plug in directly to your X16 slot and then plug into the other end of the GPU. And you can see it's quite lengthy. So you basically need to bend it and then plug it in and then plug it in both ends and then you're away. You do obviously need to mount the GPU and I'll show you how to do that. But this bracket makes life a lot easier. Now there are other options. There are various different other options out there. You can buy brackets that sit further back from the glass panel on the side and they're potentially a better option to go for, especially with a case where you don't have a lot of breathing room. And you'll see more about what I mean there as they go on. Now, with the 4000D, there's another little hinge bracket here which is held in place with a screw. Basically, you need to loosen that and then lift this up. From then, you can then insert the GPU as you would standard in the other direction, but now we're inserting it vertically instead. First of all, you need to make sure you plug the cable in, though, because with the 4000D, there isn't much room to maneuver. I found this problem when I went to install mine, and I just realized I couldn't get the cable in underneath once the GPU was set down in place. So it's important to install the cable first. So it's already plugged into the top slot and the PCIe on the motherboard. And then you just clip it in place on the bottom of the graphics card on the other end. So it's basically the same sort of process. But what it's done is extended the bracket that's on your motherboard out into this other bracket here that then clips on in the same way. So it's fairly straightforward process and relatively easy. You're basically just extending that bracket and then putting it in, in a different position. And you can see already the visual difference that makes and it looks really nice in this way especially when it's turned on and plugged in and running because you get the most of that RGB lighting and to be honest the lights in the fans at this angle looks a lot nicer 
So now we're putting the thumb screws back down. You've got the clips in there and that's all going to be held in place by the thumb screws and then screwing in that screw at the top, which should secure it in place. I do notice that there is a little bit of wobble in this card. It's quite a heavy card, quite a large card, and there's a little bit of wobble here when it's all screwed down. So that might be a consideration. And there are brackets that you can get to hold them in place a bit steadier, but it is just going to be sitting on the desk, so it's not like it's going to be wobbling around. However, if you are planning on taking your PC with you somewhere, it might be worth bearing in mind, because it would probably fly about a bit and I certainly wouldn't want to post a case like this with the GPU vertically mounted because it would probably just shear off and end in disaster. Now you can see the final product as it's installed and plugged in with all the power cables and then you'll also note as I turned it on the fans aren't spinning and as I said earlier on that's because this MSI card is designed to only start spinning its fans when it needs to which means it can run nice and cool. You'll also notice some other nice features on here. It has like a carbon fiber finish to it. It has ridges on the fans that allow for cooling purposes. Now, I wanted to put it through some benchmarking. Now, I've done some benchmarking previously on this when I was testing the Corsa Capilix Elite all in one cooler and wanted to see how the performance of that was. And now I'm running benchmarks again with Heaven, Cinebench, 3D Mark and PC Mark testing out. This is obviously sped up, but I wanted to see what the end result would be and also to see what the temperature difference is. And the results are fairly interesting. Before I get into the results though, it is worth noting one thing. I am perhaps not running the best setup possible with a 4000D. I have a 360mm radiator mounted on the front. In an ideal world, you probably want to mount a 240mm radiator at the top and have three intake fans on the front and then exhaust through the top and the rear. That would probably allow for a lot better airflow and a lot cooler environment. But still, I found the performance with it in the standard position it was pretty good. The scores were pretty good. And I'm going to leave links in the description to the 3D Mark and the PC Mark benchmark so you can see the comparison between when it was mounted in the standard position and when it was mounted vertically. And there was a notable difference both in FPS and overall scores. The results were still fairly good, um, but I was struck when I actually put my hand on the glass, and I'll show you this a bit later on as well, put my hand on the glass on the side of the tempered glass panel and felt the heat come through to the point that I actually hurt my hand. It was that hot in a certain position in front of the GPU that I realized that there was probably an issue. So I wanted to check in and dived into the scores a bit more and looked at the results. Now, when it was running, Corsair's IQ software said it was getting around 80 degrees on the RTX 2070 Super, which isn't that hot necessarily if you're putting something under load. GPUs like this can run around that temperature, so it wasn't that surprising. However, when I opened up the 3D Mark and did a side-by-side -side comparison with the data, I noticed a substantial difference. So here on the right is the information from the original benchmarks before it was mounted vertically and then on the left the new one. You can see the average temperature was 63 degrees C on the standard mounting and 78 degrees C on the vertical mounting which just shows the difference in how much hotter it got. It led to a considerably worse score in 3D Mark which was the first indicator that there was a problem. The FPS count in heaven was still good but there was definitely problems with the overall scores and you'll see the difference as I go through this data and as I said I'll link to this in the description so you can look at it yourself and check it out for yourself and see the differences in what I mean. But you can see the score originally was 11,000 and then it's 9,000 on the vertical mounting so that just goes to show what a difference it makes. Now that probably shows that the, the GPU is indeed getting suffocated. It's not getting enough air, so it's running too hot, which means the performance isn't as good. Again, similar results here with PC Mark. On the right hand side, I've got 7,000 score, on the left, 5,000. The left is when it's vertically mounted, the right was when it was in a standard position. And then, again, it's getting too hot and therefore it's throttling and it's not running as well as efficiently so you're not going to get the same frames and you're not going to get the same performance. It might still run well and it might still deliver good performance but you're going to suffer and you're penalizing yourself in this way. However, I need to caveat it by saying, obviously as I said a minute ago, my AIO radiator on the front is probably also reducing the airflow to some degree. If you had three fans mounted on the front instead and a 240mm radiator on the top then it might be more efficient and it might not have as much of an issue with this. Also it's going to vary wildly depending on what graphics card you have and 
and you could take the side panel off when you're running <laughs> if you really wanted to I mean, that kind of defeats the point in the vertical mounting in the first place if you want to just see it through the glass so what is the end result of all this really is that you probably don't want to vertically mount in the 4000D unfortunately at least not with the standard brackets because it does result in a bit of a problem. So here I was using a laser thermometer just to show the difference. And although the GPU is running at 80 degrees, on the glass just outside it's getting 65 degrees. So you're not obviously getting 80 degrees on there, but 65 degrees that was so hot to touch, felt like my hand was burning. It's not all the way across, it is mostly on the right hand side of the GPU, but it was insanely hot and it was really, really quite bad I mean, if you my wife said to me if you had a child touch it it could potentially burn them and you know really upset them and obviously you don't really want your machine pumping out that much heat when it's next to you if it's sitting next to you on the desk as mine would be unfortunately i can't test running a 240ml gp because i don't have one but it is still an interesting result and i think a worthwhile one hopefully one that's been useful to you it is a real shame though because as you can see the vertical mounting of this gpu looks fantastic and it's a very nice setup in that way. What I might do is try again with the 2080 Ti Founders Edition card that I have, which is a bit thinner, and although it's known to run hot, I feel like it might not be quite as pressed to the glass, but it was test for the future. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting, and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you, and have a great life.